Hello everyone, welcome along to another tactics video here on the channel. I'm Ash, you'll know me as Brommer18. Today, me alongside my assistant manager here are presenting to you um, another FIFA 22 tactics video. Last week what I did was kind of like a Europa League final special. We covered both Gio Van, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst Rangers and also Oliver Glasner's Frankfurt as well. And today we're doing a Europa Conference League final special. So at the moment we're in this video looking at Jose Mourinho's Roma tactics. Tactics, and we'll also be covering Arna Slot's Fire Nord tactics after this as well. So do keep an eye out for that. In this series, if you are new to the channel, what I do is I tell you how to recreate and adapt real systems in game. With this uh, tactic in particular, I've got a balanced game plan and we've also got a defensive and attacking game plan um, as it is Jose Mourinho and as we know, he's a very pragmatic, adaptable manager. Um, so we try to narrow down the principles as best as we can. Um, on a kind of side note, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you haven't done so already and you enjoy it, of course. Ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And if you want to get sort of more of a um, clear deep dive on the tactics, such as want to see where I rank it, how I rate it, get pros and cons, suitable teams to play as, you can check out my Patreon. On there, you can get access to my FIFA 22 tactics package, as well as exclusive tactics videos that I don't cover on the channel, like Uno Emery's Villarreal, uh, Sean Dyche's Burnley, etc. Uh, behind the scenes videos, early access to videos, a whole range of fantastic perks. So do go and check that out. On that note, let's get into the tactic, enough of my rambling. Right then, first things first, what do we have with the formation itself? It is, I guess, a 5-4-1 or a 5-2-2-1, um, whichever you prefer, really. You've got three centre-backs, you've got the two kind of full-backs that are more kind of full-backs as opposed to wing-backs in terms of the way they play. Um, and then you've got kind of two holding midfielders here. We've got Cristante and Vera too. Sometimes it's Cristante and uh, Oliveira. You can kind of rotate between them. And then ahead of them, you've got the two attack midfielders, often Zaniola and Pellegrini. Sometimes Mkhitaryan fills in there. Carlos Perez has had a, a kind of spell here and there. And these guys are, yes, attack midfielders, but they will kind of be back in and help form that four in the midfield. And then naturally, you've got the striker up front. So it is a kind of 5-4-1. In, in terms of looking at it basically anyway. And that's the same with both the attacking and defensive game plan as well. So quickly, before we do get into anything, I need to show you how to make this system because, as he has a good old shake off there, um, there are a few position changes as you can see. Now, if I just go into another game plan here just to show you how it's done. The best way to recreate this tactic is the 3-5-2, as one you can see here, because then you've got the defensive midfielders. You can then move back these two uh, to left and right wing back. And then what you're going to want to do is as follows. Zaniolo here, you want to move him over here to right attacking midfield. And then with Tammy Abraham, who is of course the striker, you want to move him up front um, and be that central striker. And then with Pellegrini, you can move him outside into left attacking midfield. Now obviously you can only have one cam in FIFA, so as a result, you need both of these to be right and left attack midfield. However, they do replicate the role very accurately or fairly accurately in terms of their positioning. Um, so don't worry too much about them not being in those central positions if and when they need to be. It does do a fairly good job of that. Right then, in terms of the tactics, well, in the balanced game plan, we have this. Contrary to popular opinion, Mourinho teams don't constantly drop back and just invite the, the opposition onto them. They will occasionally press, and that is what we try to replicate here with pressure on heavy touch. Occasionally, they'll look to instigate a press. Sometimes it can be when they lose the ball in terms of a counter press, but not all the time. Often, they'll try and regain their defensive shape, but occasionally they do. And if you notice that maybe they're not doing it as often as you'd want, then you can also instigate the team press, which is down and then left on the D-pad on your controller. Not overly effective, but it does at least give you something. With the width all the way down to 10, we know how Mourinho teams like to play. They're very compact, and this is sort of going to follow pretty much all the way through of the game plans, whether defensive or attacking, just being very compact, narrowing that space. But, um, in terms of the depth... It's on 40, giving you a kind of lower mid block, which is generally how his teams like to pay because they don't like to be entirely passive. Um, also, what you can do with that is you can kind of have that hybrid between kind of dropping off 
and allowing opposition to play, but also occasionally instigating that press as well that we've kind of just spoken about. So with the balance game plan, uh, you know, the block is and the depth is on 40. Offensively, what do we have? Build-up play is long ball. They'll often look to try and play in, in particular to someone like Tammy Abraham. Shawarov is another one as well. Um, and they can do that because these guys are strong, quite tall. With Abraham as well, you've also got that element of pace. Um, the likes of Zaniolo, who also have that as well. Um, so long ball allows you to do that. They will occasionally kind of play out from the back from goalkeeper restarts. You can do that manually, though. You don't need kind of build-up play to be on um, slow build-up or what have you. And then with chance creation... Oi! Oi! What are you doing? No. No. The chance creation is forward runs. That's how you're going to have that kind of Im well impetus on counter-attacking. How they like to kind of throw in forward and exploit the space. Abraham, Pellegrini, Zaniolo. These kind of front three. The wing-backs as well um, on occasion. These guys are going to be the ones contributing to that. So that will allow them to do that. And that's how we forward runs. How you're going to get the attack midfielders kind of running and penetrating in behind as well. Uh, because naturally you can't get them to run in behind with that position instructions. The width is up to 70, giving you a, a nice wide shape. This means they can get the ball out wide to the likes of the wing backs and then start to whip crosses in. That's that that's a big part of their armory for sure. They also like to try and stretch the opposition out if and when they can. And again, try and create that space as well, which is how you're going to do that with a wide system in place. Players in the box is on six, giving you three players in the box, and it's generally going to be the front three, a striker and the two attack midfielders. Who are going to be doing that? Occasionally what you might find is that the central midfielder, the boxer box, or the kind of more boxer box, my only one, may get forward occasionally, but that's more in the attacking game plan. So we'll come on to that a little bit later as well. Finally, with the set pieces, both the corners and free kicks are on four as we look to get a lot of men into the box. All of your kind of aerial threats, really, um, and then they can kind of utilize those situations to their advantage and you know be a real threat from those situations. With the player instructions, then starting off with Rui Patricio in goal, we've got comes for crosses on the saving on crosses, but we save outside the box, he's just unbalanced. You don't need him to be that sweeper keeper because you're playing a slightly lower line, more of a mid block. Um, so as a result, you can keep that as it is. But the saving on cross is definitely someone who likes to kind of assert himself. And I think it's one of the reasons why Mourinho was kind of attracted to him as well. He likes his kind of aggressive-minded players. Um, and, you know, that counts for being in goal as well. With the three centre-backs, there are a change you will need to make. And that is with the interceptions. You want all three of these on conservative interceptions. The reason why you want these is that his centre-backs do not kind of try and step out, win the ball aggressively. Instead, they kind of play safety first. Um, and what that entails is them kind of play more of a cover role. All of them, they'll often look to back off, kind of, again, protection, protect first, rather than try and win on the front foot. As a kind of um, complement to that, what you'll find is that, you know, with Marina, we talk about how he likes those aggressive players. Well, how is that kind of shown in his team if the centre-backs don't play that way? Well, he likes the central midfielders to do that. You know, the defensive midfielders. This is why we often talk about how he likes these big-bodied, aggressive uh, central midfielders. And that's what, you know, they're going to be on aggressive interceptions. So we'll come on to them shortly and sort of talk about that a little bit more. With the two full-backs or wing-backs, whichever you prefer, both of them are on the same. In this case, we have Rick Karsdorp and uh, Leonardo Spinazzola. They are both on join the attack and overlap as well. Um, but the reason why we got them at wing back as opposed to right and left midfield, which we often do in these three back systems, and why this is more a five back is because of just how they play in general. They're not often kind of, um, in terms of their starting positions, really far at the pitch. They're not often penetrating in behind, um, you know, from even when the team has possession with their own centre backs, for example, as is often the case with those kind of three backs. And that's how I differentiate a three back from a five back system. So that's something you might just want to kind of bear in mind as well. Right then, with the two defensive midfielders, first things first with Cristante. The defensive behaviour, as is the case with Vera 2, is man mark. Now, we've spoken often about how it doesn't really um, work on this game. However, I did decide to kind of go with it for this system just because. You know, that's how Marino plays. If you want to try and recreate it, you know, we've got to do this, unfortunately. So we've gone with Man Mark in the hope that they will occasionally kind of follow people a little bit more. What I've noticed is 
it's working kind of more outside the box when you've got kind of midfield possession. It's when the opposition have the ball in your defensive third, their attacking third, that's when it kind of falls off a little bit. So it's something worth kind of, you know, I guess keeping an eye on. With the attacking support, um, he's unstable while attacking. This guy on the right is that kind of out and out defensive midfielder. Um, and so that's why he'll be on stay back while attacking. His interceptions, again, we talk about aggressive interceptions. These are the guys he wants them kind of covering more ground, really imposing themselves onto the opposition, utilizing as much of their kind of energy levels as they can and protecting the center backs you know that's what he's trying to do he's trying to relieve the pressure and the responsibilities from his center backs in defensive position you're on cover center here he doesn't want them being dragged out too much unless they have to and in which case you can manually do that otherwise it's kind of the job of the fullback um you know to do that otherwise he will then come out now with Vera 2, on the other hand, you've got someone who's slightly more adventurous, not an out-and-out box-to-box in the balance game plan, but someone who will kind of support attacks a little bit more. Um, in this case, the only change you do need to make for that to be the case, though, is the attack support. Instead of having him on stay while attacking, this time we have him on balanced attack. Right then, with the front three, starting off with Pellegrini, who is that kind of box-to-box, out-and-out midfielder. He's on comeback on defence to get him tracking back. He will help to kind of, um, you know, fill out on the left-hand side as well because he's a left-attacking midfielder. And support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross, as we spoke about, to try and replicate that box-to-box -box role. His positioning freedom is stick to position and his interceptions are on normal. Now, with Zaniolo, there is a slight difference. Still on comeback on defence, still on getting to the box of crosses and normal interceptions, but this time with the positioning freedom, he is on drift wide as he's going to look to kind of come out wide a little bit more and support, um, you know, generally kind of the fullback of Karsdorp. You know, naturally, we know what Zaniola is like. He's kind of that hybrid attacking midfielder winger. Um, you know, he's played both roles, and that's kind of what Mourinho's tried to do. He's tried to kind of, you know, adapt to that and kind of play to his strengths. They also play Mikatarian, who's also kind of a hybrid attacking midfielder winger. Um, so that that position these instructions kind of suit whoever they're kind of getting into that position and with the striker finally tammy abraham uh, we've got a few instructions here first thing starts with attacking runs is getting behind he will often look to penetrate the back line with his pace with his clever movement and he'll also try and drift wider as a result he'll come to sometimes Something that we spoke about in recent times with, say, Erling Haaland, for example, their kind of movement. They often like to kind of drift into these half spaces in the wide areas where it's a little bit less congested because maybe the opposition fullbacks have committed, for example. Um, and that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to utilise that space as much as possible. Um, so that's, again, how he kind of finds that space. Finally, his defensive support is on stay forward as he looks to be that kind of out ball and that target going forward. So with that being said, let's talk about the defensive game plan now. Well, the formation stays the same, but the principles, um, the execution kind of changes. So first things first, tactically, what do we have? Well, this time the defensive start is dropped back. This is when they're in real kind of see the game out mode. Um, and so with that, you'll then find that the depth then drops off as well. This time it's not a mid block. This time it is an out and out low block. So we are on 20, giving you that kind of low, deep defensive line. Um, the in terms of offensively the build up play and the chance creation both stay the same as long ball and forward runs still giving you that emphasis on the counter attack but you will find the less players are counter attacking this time and the whip stays the same as well on 70s they still try and kind of stretch the play um, even when they need to offensively but this time the players in the box has moved down um, so it's on five this time meaning that you will have roughly between two and three players in the box, but you won't always have three. This time, someone like Zaniolo um, or Pellegrini may just stay around or on the edge of the box um, to, to try and you know, just give a little bit of protection in those upper areas um, of the pitch. The corners stay the same this time on four because you're still trying to get the kind of the tall guys in there, the centre backs, etc. But this time, the free kicks goes down to three. As they're kind of less committive in that sort of area they feel like they can still hurt teams more on corners and that's something they do um, very well and on top of that as well um, so we keep them on four but then the free kicks move down to three in terms of the player instructions then well with Zaniola this time you've got balance crossing um, runs instead of getting to the box of the crosses as we kind of spoke about how it might not be 
Um, all three of them getting in this time. One of them might stay on the edge. Generally, that is going to be um, someone like Zaniolo. Um, with Era 2, rather than balance attacking, this time you got him on stay back um, while attacking. So both of them are really going to act as those kind of protective um, you know, out-and-out -out defensive midfielders. Often that's more a case for someone like Cristante and then someone like Oliveira um, to play those two roles. And then with the uh, fullbacks, while Spinazzola will remain the same on join the attack, and it's usually throughout the season kind of been Zalewski until you know, the last few weeks or so when Spinazzola has returned from injury. Um, with the right back, often Karsdorp, this time his attacking runs are unbalanced rather than get forward. Um, as he's going to be a little bit more selective with the attacks where he'll join um, and kind of offer the, another option to kind of stay back um, and help protect a little bit more. So with the defensive game plan being done, what about attacking when they're trying to push for a goal, when they, um, you know, maybe they're behind, maybe they're playing against a team, you know, kind of low down the table they're expected to be. How has it changed? Well, again, the formation stays the same, but the execution differs. This time, defensive style is pressed after possession loss, employing more of a counter-pressing system when out of possession as opposed to that kind of selective pressing. Um, and then the width is actually boosted up to 30, giving you a slightly more balanced um, shape in terms of um, your width. What this does is it means that they can kind of get out of the opposition a little bit more quickly and be closer to them than it would when in the other two game plans when both of them are on, are on 10. Um, the depth is also pushed up to 60, still a mid block, but slightly um, you know, further forward, again, taking more risks. Not risky enough to play with that kind of ultra high line, but certainly more risk worthy. Um, with offensively, long ball and forward run still the same. Width is now onto 80 as they become really kind of crossing orientated out and out, really getting balls wide and trying to get balls into the box as well. So the width goes up to 80. And with that in mind, players in the box goes up to eight as well, giving you four players in the box. And this is where the box to box midfielder really comes into it. Someone like Jordan Vera too, which will come on in the player instructions and then finally corners and free kicks both of these are also on four they don't kind of commit all the way unless you're really going gung-ho it's the last few minutes and you desperately need a goal so do bear that one in mind with the player instructions what changes well all the defenders this time the center backs rather than on conservative interceptions they're changed to normal as they become a little bit more committed and slightly more aggressive in the tackle so they'll kind of step out a little bit more um, and then the two wing backs absolutely fine no need to change that this time with the box to box midfielder um, how you're going to replicate that when he's at the defensive midfield where you're going to have his attacking support runs on get forward elsewhere though um, you know the rest of his instructions do stay the same um, other than that the likes of Abraham all on the same Zaniolo Pellegrini as well both these are on the same instruction so it's just kind of small little tweaks either way um, to kind of influence the game depending on the situation and what they need. So with that being said, it is time to round off the video then guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do drop a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Um, Go and check out my Patreon, as I spoke about at the start of the video. Now we can get access to a whole host of fantastic perks, um, and it's a great way to support the channel if you can afford it. Uh, if you've got any questions about the tactic whatsoever, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I will do my best to get back to you. And on that note, it's time to run it up there. So from me and my assistant manager over here, who is really contributing heavily, as you can see. Um, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. And this confrontation is underway. And they did have the ball, but not anymore. Lost possession. Frederick Aursnes. Could be troublesome. Can they get in behind them? Very comfortable when in possession. Nelson. Wonderful chance. What an important piece of defending.
Who can they pick out? Well, desperately close to going in that time. Rick Carsdorf. Well, we know how troublesome he can be on the pitch, but what should we expect from him today, Stuart? Well, Derek, he's the perfect finisher. He's got a great shot on him, his movement is excellent, and in 1v1 situations, you always expect him to score. Possession changes hands, the interception there. A bit sloppy in possession. Into the advanced position. The delivery. And it wasn't quite as good as it looked when it was played over. On a pass that lacks quality. Nelson. Kukchu. Sinistera. That's a good-looking ball. Oh, couldn't quite find his teammate. Useful-looking ball. He might profit from here, you know. Can they stop it going in? Oh, just wide of the mark. Goal kick. Well, that never looked like troubling the keeper, did it? But it was worth an effort. A good strike from him. Good-looking sequence. Now a decent position. And players waiting at the far post. Still could be dangerous. But no, that's the end of the move because offside is the verdict. Could be dangerous. Well, he's going to be disappointed with that pass. Well, the ball lost here. Vertu. Spinazzola. Spinazzola. Oh, the threat is there. Well, not quite the cross he was hoping for. Gustil. And you can sense the threat is there. Now he must favour the cross. Every pass really well hit, but just too much height on it. Promising sequence. Great strong tackle. Throw in forthcoming. Pellegrini. Spinazzola. That's not a bad ball. Well, he put the cross into the right place, but no one able to finish it off. Kukchu. Throw in, it's going to be. Kukchu. Nelson. Making use of his physical strength to hang on to it. 
Frederik Aursnes. Sinisterra. Oh, good defending to stop a decent looking attack. And the whistle is sounded for half time in this game. The teams are ready to have a go at each other again as the second half commences. Pellegrini. Vertu. Spinazzola. Oh, he's given the ball away. Nelson struggling to keep the ball oh great vision he's foiled them on his own Nelson good movement a really committed challenge and it's gone out for a throw in and with play stopped, they will make the change now. Kukchu. Luis Sinisterra. Top class defending. And the pass could do damage. Can he put them in front? Well, it was a wonderful chance, but the goalkeeper comes through. Yes, Derek, we have to give credit to the keeper, but surely he should have scored there. That's a big, big chance. Trying to deliver it accurately. Now, that was never likely to trouble the keeper. Could pick out a teammate. Might take the lead. Can he fire it towards goal? Oh, there's the goal! There's the opener! How about that? Well, here's the replay, and it's a really inviting ball played into the box, begging players to attack it, and then the finish is fairly simple in the end. That's a good goal. So underway again here, one nil the score. Gertrauda. Gustil. Kukchu. Well, pass after pass, maybe they can chisel an opportunity. Comfortable in dealing with the cross. Nice and easy for the keeper. Nice switch of play. Well, he likes to run at them. Brilliant piece of skill. A deft clearance. Well, they've won themselves a corner and a chance perhaps to add an additional goal for security. So a personnel change then.
Here it is now, a substitution. Corner kick played in. And he didn't miss by all that much with the header. Just a little bit off target. Inside the final 15 minutes. Well, still searching for the equaliser, but not passing it anxiously. Kukchu. He has time to play it over. Well, here's the replay, and in many ways, it doesn't do justice to how patient they were in the build-up. Just so composed, waiting for the right moment. And it makes the striker's job so easy. All he has to do is make the right connection. It's a lovely goal. Back underway, level pegging, one goal apiece in this game. Ten minutes left for play. Well, the fans are making so much noise here. They believe the winner's coming, but it needs a moment of inspiration for one of those players out on the pitch. What a finale we've got. And take it away. And still on the lookout for the goal that could be so important at this juncture. Good pressure, can they make something of this? An effective ball. That's a useful cross. Read it superbly to take back possession. And space to attack. Chance to play it in. Jens Tornstra. Well, somehow the goalkeeper got to it. And the teams are level, and every corner counts at this juncture. And they're making a change. Not really the ideal clearance. Well, beating his opponent, Chahan Bach. Well, a really important piece of goalkeeping at this stage. Well, it's such a key moment in the game. That's a really good save. Delivering it. And they couldn't take advantage of the chance. And you've got to keep the ball a bit better than that. Well, that's it for the 90 minutes. But this is not over. And 2.50...